Yahshua is the actual Hebrew name of Jesus. Jesus is a translation. Yahshua means salvation, as all Hebrew names have meanings. But again, we say we love Yahshua, but we choose to worship and celebrate him in the way we desire and not based off of what he told us. How can we say we know him, but not know that he hates this pagan worship and wants us to be set apart? If we don't know that, it's easy to understand how he could turn many of us away and say, I never knew you. How can we say we know him and don't know about the things he hates? Now, depending on how much you've been awakened to the truth and the deception we have been given in this world, this information may be a confirmation to you or maybe just too much to bear. What's up, gang? It's your boy Allende coming to you from Authentic Alphas. And today what I'd like to talk about is the reasons why I don't celebrate holidays, Christmas in particular. And I'm going to use some educational clips from one of my favorite uh, channels pertaining to the faith. That would be truth unedited so you guys go ahead check in the description i'm gonna go ahead and put the link to the video but i want you to sub to that channel for all the guys that are interested in the book and the word this guy has a ton of amazing content out there to help guide you help answer some questions um and also he explains it much better than i can so that's why i'm going to go ahead and take advantage of some of his content so now when talking about christmas the most simplistic question that one would ask, let's say you were a child, what are we celebrating? And the average person would tell you that it's the celebration of Jesus Christ's birthday. Personally, I like to call him Yahweh. I don't need the translation. Yahweh sounds a lot better than Jesus anyway, in my opinion. So let's investigate. For Christians, the fact of his birth was settled, but the date remained a mystery. The Bible doesn't mention exactly when Christ was born, but certain facts suggest it probably was not in December. All right, guys. So the first explanation for why we celebrate Christmas, I'm going to go ahead and call Cap. Because as we all know, Yahweh was not born on the 25th of December. He wasn't born in December or even the winter for that matter. So maybe because we don't know his exact birthday is why people decided to celebrate Christmas on December 25th. Let's investigate further. It is not according to Christ. We do not have one scripture that tells us that we should celebrate his birthday. He has never even told us what day it was that he was born on. The celebration of his birthday, known as Christmas, is absolutely a tradition of man. It is something that man created. The Apostle Paul warned us not to be cheated through the philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of this world. So if this was something that people decided to do, if followers of Christ decided to celebrate his birthday in December, they would be wrong. Because in scripture, it says to not follow traditions of man. So when does the Bible tell us to celebrate Christmas? Wait a minute, the Bible doesn't mention. I guess that rules out people deciding when to worship Jesus Christ's birthday or celebrate it for that matter. It sounds like the Bible is telling us not to follow the traditions of man. Yet the Bible does not mention Jesus's birthday nor that we should be celebrating it. So why did we start celebrating it? Let's investigate further. But centuries before Jesus walked the earth, early Europeans were celebrating light and birth in the darkest days of winter. In the Norse country, this winter celebration was known as Yule. Around December 21st, the winter solstice, fathers and sons would drag home the biggest log they could find and set it on fire. Okay. So, not only was Jesus not born in December. Not only does the Bible make no mention to celebrate Christ's birthday, but you mean to tell me that Christmas was celebrated long before Jesus was even born? So how the fuck could it be a celebration of Christ's birthday? Let's investigate further. Also dragged inside were evergreens, the one plant that could make it through a Norse winter. Evergreens proved that life persisted in this dark time. Oh, okay. 
So we have a multi-million dollar business every year in which people go out and buy trees. Many of these trees are actually organic. They're real trees that someone cut down to celebrate the birth of Christ. Yet Christmas has nothing to do with Christ, nor does Christmas trees. Hmm. So we're putting Christmas trees in our living room to celebrate pagan holiday. Not only does Christmas have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, but neither does the multi-million dollar business of selling Christmas trees. Huh. Let's investigate further. The Romans were worshiping the sun god. A new religion was taking hold throughout the empire. At first, Christians didn't celebrate the birth of Christ. His resurrection was the essential fact of the new religion. By the fourth century, however, the question of the holy birth became impossible to ignore. Followers of Yahshua were growing in number in Rome. Constantine claims to have a vision of a cross and converts all of Rome under the religion of Christianity. This was not because he was a true believer in Yahshua, but a way of squashing the conflict between the pagans and the ones they classified as Christians. Either way, what Constantine did was mesh Rome's already known pagan beliefs with belief in Yahshua. Yahshua was plugged in as the sun god reborn and Mary was the mother goddess. There was much gelling of beliefs that later formed the Roman Catholic Church. Much of this was done at the Council of Nicaea. If pagan Rome was already celebrating the birth of Mithra on December 25th, it seemed natural to honor the birth of the Christ child at the same time. By the fourth century, the church made it official. December 25th was declared the feast day of the nativity. Okay guys, so we're pretty much getting to the meat of it here. So although I started this video out with the definition of Yahweh, and um, some biblical texts, I want to be clear. This isn't about me bringing you to the faith. This isn't about religion. This isn't about whether or not you're a Christian or what have you. This is simply me challenging the narrative and exposing the blatant lies and manipulation. Now, if you want to focus on the religious aspect of it, then you should be interested to know that it's a pagan holiday and you're worshiping completely different gods than to Jesus Christ that you're led to believe. Let's continue. This is how Christmas was started. The Christian church formed by Rome did not reject pagan practices and beliefs. It completely mixed it all together with the belief from the followers of Yahshua. Christmas was established as the birth of the sun god reborn. But instead of it being under the other pagan names of their sun gods, they used the name Jesus. This is the condensed version of how Christmas came about. The early church did not celebrate this holiday. Christmas has always been pagan. In fact, even in America, in the 17th century, the celebration of Christmas was banned in places in the country. Okay. Well, the simplest explanation is this. Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. The origins far, far, far precede the birth of Christ. And the reason why he's even involved in this holiday is simply because a ruler, Constantine, came into power over a population that was mostly pagan, and at the same time, the Christian religion was multiplying in numbers. And in order to keep the peace and to assimilate these two different cultures, he simply did a mixing and a blending and a hybrid of their faiths. Simple. It's kind of like, I don't know, maybe you could call it crowd control. So that's the simple aspect of it. And I know you guys can grasp that. But I want to point out um, some, some other similarities in how we are being lied to. Now, why do people believe that blacks in America come from Africa? Simply because the ruling class decided to tell you that. Why do we believe that Europeans came here and built up all of this fantastic, fantastic, fantastical architecture? We only believe that because that's what we were told. But if you look into those stories, much like the story of Christmas, it just doesn't add up. The same way that people were celebrating Christmas long before Christ was born, proving that it couldn't possibly be a celebration of his birthday if it was already being celebrated before he was born, is the same way that you believing that these cathedrals, that these castles, 
these churches, these courthouses, were actually built by settlers that came to the New World. With what materials? With what labor force? With what technology? Yet these buildings were already here. But they tell you that the natives were savages that didn't have, what, writing? They didn't have advanced technology? They weren't architects? But yet, the buildings were already there when the settlers got there. The point that I'm making is that we've been lied to about everything, from religion, race, architecture, male-female dynamics and relationships, everything we've been lied to about. But yet, we still keep spending our hard-earned money to participate in this foolery. When speaking with people, I used to hear many people say, well, there's no real scripture that tells us not to celebrate Christmas, so it's not really that big of a deal. But that is incorrect. He speaks very much about the subject, but he doesn't specifically name Christmas because Christmas wasn't celebrated during his time. He speaks about traditions and customs because it's not only Christmas that we practice falsely, but many other traditions and customs as well. So let's see and understand what he says about traditions. Yahshua himself said in Mark chapter 7, verse 13, making the word of Elohim of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down and many such things you do. But of course it's a very short step from the feast day of the risen sun, S-U-N, to the feast day of the risen sun, S-O-N. So in a sense, it's a very good choice that the symbolism is there because um, you know, the feast day of the unconquered sun was about fertility, about birth. Um, and so obviously it's the Christian Christmas. The church knew it could not outlaw the pagan traditions of Christmas, so it set out to adopt them. Nah, son. It's not about none of what he's talking about. It's just simply about control. The same way they know that they couldn't outlaw paganism, so they said, we'll come up with another solution that works well, path with the least resistance. It's the same way they couldn't get rid of these same buildings that they're showing you in this time frame. They couldn't get rid of these cathedrals. They couldn't get rid of these castles. They tried to get rid of most of them, and the ones they couldn't get rid of, would they do? They simply retrofitted them. They repurposed them, which is exactly what they did with this holiday. It was a pagan holiday. The population of Christians was increasing. So they just repurposed the holiday. Voila. But when we practice traditions that have been passed down, we make the word of Elohim of no effect. Christmas was never commanded in scripture. It is a tradition that was passed down over time. It is a tradition of men. The Apostle Paul speaks on this specifically in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Please understand that this is what the celebration of Christmas is. Just to sum that up, basically what he's saying is, not only does the Bible not say anything about us celebrating Christmas, it actually says that we should not be celebrating Christmas. When it's talking about not um, you know, cooperating with these traditions of man, um, there's, there's also a verse in the Bible that tells the chosen people not to take on the ways of the Gentiles. So we really shouldn't be celebrating Christmas, bro, is, is basically what the book is telling us. Now, for people that are out there saying, oh, the, the Bible doesn't explicitly say not to celebrate Christmas. All right, pay attention how could it say that when the word didn't exist at that time? They weren't calling it Christmas at that time. So, of course, the Bible isn't going to refer to it by name. That's the same as saying that the Bible doesn't mention dinosaurs simply because it doesn't use the word dinosaurs. Yet the Bible refers to what we call dinosaurs multiple times. It doesn't call them dinosaurs, obviously. It calls them giant lizards, behemoths. It gives all other type of descriptions of really, really large reptiles. It is referring to the same creatures that we refer to as dinosaurs. And now, many of you are thinking, well, that doesn't make sense because dinosaurs have been extinct for 63 million years. The same people telling you that dinosaurs have been extinct for millions of years... <sighs> Are the same people telling you that alligators, crocodiles, dolphins, whales, sharks, tortoises are all dinosaurs? So which one is it, numb nuts? Are they extinct or are some of them still here? The point is that evolution is also a lie. They're running game. It's cap. By mid-century, Christmas was everywhere in America, in the streets, in the homes, in the marketplace. 
The one place you could not find Christmas was in church. Most Americans were Protestant, and the Protestant church had ignored Christmas for years. But Protestant Victorians longed for official religion on this sacred day. What a number of them do initially is say, well, if we can't find a Christmas service in our Baptist church or our Presbyterian church, let's go see what the Catholics are doing, or let's go see what the Episcopalians are doing. And increasingly, that puts pressure on these Latter-day Puritans to have Christmas services, because there's a way in which lay people begin to expect. So basically, they just bribed people with fun. They bribed people with booze and, you know, orgies and having a good time. And of course, people don't want to make sacrifices for righteousness, so you can always persuade people with a good time. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like uh, girls just want to have fun or, or we're going to party like it's 1999, right? So people are always going to want to believe what's more fun and less work. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. We borrowed the Christmas tree from Germany and the Christmas card from England. But one Christmas icon was developed right here in America, Santa Claus. Hang your stock and say your prayers, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Long before Santa, however, there was Saint Nicholas, a Greek Orthodox bishop who became one of the most popular saints of the Middle Ages. On December 6th, St. Nicholas Day, good children woke to gifts from the kindly saint. Bad children sulked away with nothing. In Holland, he was known as Sinterklaas, and when the Dutch came to this country, they brought tales of their gift-giving Nicholas with them. This quaint custom caught the imagination of Clement Clark Moore, a well-heeled Episcopal minister in New York City. In 1822, Moore wrote a poem for his children about a good-natured saint who came down the chimney on Christmas Eve. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse." Moore dreamed up Dasher, Dancer, and the rest of the reindeer, along with Santa's entrance through the chimney. But at first he was embarrassed by the poem. He worried it was too frivolous for a man of the church. Clement Moore was a minister. Here a minister, who should be on the other side, is promoting a secular Christmas with reindeer and all the rest of it. But there was no mention in the poem of anything religious. And in fact, that's why he didn't reveal who he was. In the beginning, he didn't reveal the authorship. Moore soon owned up to the poem when it became clear that every child in America was scanning the horizon for rain. Now, for me personally, trying to understand the lie of Santa Claus was a pivotal moment for me in my childhood. It was like an awakening, not because I had to cope with finding out that Santa wasn't real. I was never told Santa was real. Thank God, my grandparents and parents, they never wasted the time to make, to make up this make-believe fat white dude coming down a chimney. What fascinated me about it was that all the other kids believed it. And I was just always a very, very like, um, rational person. Even when I was small, I was I was asking some what I thought were pretty obvious questions, like most people don't even have a chimney, so like how the hell did Santa get in the house? Plus, I live in New York where locked doors is like mandatory. You know, we gotta lock every door, lock every window. So I was like, hold up, if a burglar can't get in, how does fat ass getting in? It just didn't make any sense to me that other people would believe that. Like I said, I was never told Santa was real. So what I didn't understand is why other people were gullible enough to believe in this Santa Claus. And I remember having arguments with other children, and they were getting like all emotional over it. And I was like, yo, these kids are idiots. Thomas Nast, a cartoonist for Harper's Weekly, settled the matter once and for all with his version of the Christmas saint. Nast Santa was rounder and jollier than his austere Catholic cousin. He looked, in fact, like a man of his times, a man who would fit right in with the rotund, bewhiskered robber barons of the late 19th century. Santa Claus provided a way for both children and parents to pretend that Christmas presents were not in the realm of the commercial marketplace, that Christmas presents existed in the realm of pure domestic affection. So Santa Claus played a very important role for both parents and children. He took presents out of the realm of commerce. But the other thing was, what the hell does it have to do with Jesus? So obviously I had to get a little bit older to realize that it was just some marketing stuff and whatever. They were just trying to sell stuff. But like I said, at the time, the thing that stood out the most to me was why do my peers believe this, this foolishness? But I digress. Christmas was celebrated long before Yahshua was ever born. But ever since the time of Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz, Pagans had celebrated the birth of their sun god on December 25th. It obviously was never called Christmas. 
but it was a pagan festival celebrated. This is why we were destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If we were all taught the history of Christmas, then I'm positive it wouldn't be celebrated. If we just stop giving our blind trust to these churches and pastors and read the word on our own, it becomes quite clear that we should not partake in these traditions of men. Jesus is not the reason for the season. Tammuz is the reason for the Christmas season. Lucifer is the reason for the Christmas season. When you are celebrating Christmas, you are celebrating Satan, not Jesus. He would not have you celebrating him on the same day that the devil worshippers and pagans have been celebrating their false god for ages before. They just mix paganism with what they call Christian beliefs. You don't celebrate Christmas because you've been told to do so by God, but because you have been passed down this tradition over time and never really questioned it and think it's all good. Exactly what Yahshua says makes the word of Elohim have no effect in your life. Remember, Mark chapter 7 verse 13. Repent and remove these false traditions from your worship of him. Celebrate him every day. Oh. Like my boy Dane Calloway say, I'm just here to make you think. I ain't trying to change anybody's mind. I'm not trying to uh, piss on your parade or tell you that you shouldn't be having a good time on holidays. I'm just simply saying, think for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't have that slave mentality. Stop doing things just because they're familiar and they're tradition. Damn sure don't be teaching your kids ab ab about Santa Claus. I mean, if you're over here telling your kids that Santa Claus exists, bro, you really need to reevaluate that. Now, I know your woman or your wife or whatever, your baby mama, she going to want to do it from an emotional standpoint. But these are the type of things that you need to also be protecting your family from. Not just physical threats, but threats to the mind, right? There's a lot of children that grow up having trust issues with their parents simply over this whole Santa Claus crap. Because if you're over here telling them about Santa Claus and then later on you got to tell them that it was all a lie, then if you're trying to teach them about the faith, or any faith for that matter, why would they believe you then? How are your children supposed to know when you're telling the truth and when you're telling white lies because they're cute? Anyway, what I'm trying to say is be your own man and stop following man. You understand what I'm trying to say? I get it. It's hard to go against the masses. It's hard to go against the crowd. But in this day and age, the majority of people are following Satan's way. Whether you believe in God or not, <laughs> the people that run the world, they believe in Lucifer. Okay? And what they're doing is very Luciferian. So, like I said, whether you believe in, in, in a higher power or not is besides the point. The way the world is being ran, okay, is according to that doctrine. You know what I'm saying? So just know what you're getting into before you get into it. Know what things mean before you co-sign. And like I said, man, think for yourself. That is a brief history of Christmas, what it is, how its celebration first emerged, what the details of it initially were, and why this specific date was chosen. Where many of the modern Christmas customs come from, their connection with...